Yeah, okay, I know it's been quite a while since my last video. I've had quite a lot on my plate recently. Most predominantly, I've had to study for my driving theory test. So the left one is the clutch. Hey, I wonder if this book can tell me what that STOP sound stands for. Also, there are a lot of humanitarian issues that require the attention of everybody. There's a lot of injustice in the world right now and we should be doing something about it. Oh dear. What a terribly sad picture of a dead baby on the beach. I solved the refugee crisis! And also these YouTube videos do not fund themselves, which means I've had to make a little bit of money on the side through a complicated financial series of all of my investments and calculations. It's all very complicated and rather technical. Come on, the accumulator. Wales and Israel crawl. Yes. Molten Azerbaijan crawl. Yes. Norway win. Yes. Italy win. Yes. Bosnia win. Yes. Turkey win. Yes. Belgium win. Yes, one more. Iceland to win. How could you draw at home to Kazakhstan? Anyway, what's today's video about? Well, you might have noticed that bed sheets have changed again. They are tartan, which is kind of appropriate because today's video is about Scotland, or more specifically Scottish independence. Depending on when this video actually goes out, it should be roughly around the time of the first anniversary of the first Scottish independence referendum. Now I say the first independence referendum because everybody's talking about Indirect 2, when is that? Somebody actually said to me the other day, when is the second independence referendum? As though it's just a census, like they ask us every 10 years or something. Which actually is not a bad idea. It would save all this bickering about when you have a mandate for a second referendum or whatever. Just do it like a census. Hold it once every ten years and stop bickering about it. And just ask the people of Scotland, do you want independence yet? No? Okay, just checking. We'll ask again in another ten years and you repeat that process until they eventually get the answer right. Now, I say that slightly in jest, because I don't really want to bias this video with my opinions. I'm more interested in observing what the political lie of the land is one year old. I know which way I voted in the referendum last year, but in hindsight, I don't think it would have been a great thing for Scotland if the Yes campaign had won by a margin of 51 to 49. I would much rather that the Scottish people took their independence with an overwhelming majority 60-70% at least, so that there was a clear direction and mandate from the people. What I would not be saying in the aftermath of a referendum when it's been as close as it was is to say that the matter is settled, Mr Osborne, because the future of Scotland is very much up in the air. There's a lot we don't know, but the one thing we do know is the matter is far from settled. There was a poll conducted recently by STD which suggested that 53% of Scottish people now support independence. Now, like all opinion polls, we should take this with a pinch of salt, because it basically means that 53% of people that don't have the gumption to duck out of the way when they see somebody coming towards them in the street with a clipboard support independence. So we can't really draw any conclusions from that. However, that is just one of a number of studies at the moment which all seem to show that support for Scottish independence is still on the rise. Let's not forget that the referendum campaign lasted two and a half years and at the start of that, support for independence was sitting at about 30%. That went all the way up to 45% at the time of the actual vote. So there is a good case there that the Yes campaign lost the referendum but won the argument. Post-referendum, that trend seems to be continuing. And there are a lot of polls that show that south of the border, support for Scottish independence was very high. 
but perhaps the most striking one of the lot was after the referendum at the UK general election of 2016, where the people of England voted in a conservative majority government for the whole of the United Kingdom. Now, what is the rational reason for doing that? I assume it must be that they want to send a clear message to the people of Scotland that says, go, save yourselves. Because why else would you do that? Now, you might think that I am joking and that I am letting my own bias slip back into things here when I say that English people predominantly support Scottish independence. But no, it is a natural reaction to the way the No campaign was fought in Scotland. You cannot go lying to the Scottish people and saying that the rest of the UK subsidises Scotland without the rest of the UK going, well, hang on a minute, why are we so desperate to keep them? So the actual people of England cannot be blamed for thinking, OK then, I'd quite like to get rid of Scotland. And of course that puts them out of touch with the Westminster establishment, because they are profiting off of Scotland being part of the United Kingdom, although the people of the country are not. Now, you might say that it's all very well to believe that the political establishment lies to the people of Scotland, but it's another thing entirely to just blindly assume that the people of England fell for these lies. But I do think there is evidence to bear this out, and again, it is the result of the UK 2015 general election, because otherwise you would have to believe that the people of England genuinely wanted a Conservative majority government. I find it far more likely that they bought into the rhetoric of the Conservatives that said there would be chaos if the SNP got into Westminster, and as the biggest party, people voted for them just because they did not want another coalition with SNP, with the Lib Dems, with whoever, they just wanted a single party government regardless of who that was. In the unlikely event that they actually did want the government they voted for, then that just goes to show the difference of opinions and priorities between the people of Scotland and the people of England, when the people of Scotland voted overwhelmingly in favour of the SNP. Now that's not to say, as I have said before, that they automatically support independence, it means they support the policies of the SNP which were anti-austerity and anti-Tory. I could host a meeting in my living room for every Labour, Conservative and Liberal Democrat, Scottish MP and still have enough seats left over for everybody that lives here. Now, I know the Conservatives try and argue that they are not dead in Scotland. Ruth Davidson, the Scottish Conservative leader, argued during the general election debates that one in six people in Scotland are Conservative. Now that may very well be true, but more than one in five believe in the Loch Ness Monster. And given the choice, most Scottish people would rather have Nessie running the country than any of the Conservatives. The only question that remains is why? If it's true that 53% of Scottish people now support independence, why didn't they do so a year ago? I would argue it's because they've had a chance to see the aftermath of the referendum. While there are plenty of people that voted yes, going around, telling anybody that will listen, I told you so, the no voters are getting to see the lies the establishment told them exposed. A good example was a few days after the referendum where it was announced that a hundred years worth of oil had just been found in the North Sea. They kept that quiet prior to their referendum, and of course the big one was the vow. The new powers for Scotland which had hastily been offered to them at the last minute. And that should have been a warning sign to everybody that the establishment had no intention of keeping that promise. One year on, and there are still no new powers for Scotland that we didn't have prior to the referendum. It's almost like they didn't mean it. Or is it just lost in the post? Are they in the same package as those headphones that Amazon are supposed to be sending me? As for me, 
I don't think independence is inevitable. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as that. A lot of it will depend on the timing of the second independence referendum, and the SNP are determined to get that right. However, if you're on the yes side, there are encouraging signs. For one thing, there's the momentum. For another, there's the fact that we could even pass devolution at the first time passing. That went to a second referendum as well, and on the first time, Labour were opposed to devolution and they supported it the second time round. The same may very well follow for the question of independence, because Labour were wiped out of Scotland predominantly for their support of the No campaign in the referendum. The new Scottish leader might take a different view on that and at least make the party independence neutral. Labour are going through a massive change at the moment with Jeremy Corbyn taking over down south and I'm quite happy about that but that's another video.